Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanolade Zedan. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333, and we're gonna have another exhibition match stream today, starting off with a match between 400 and Exploit on Comet Catcher Redux. Let's get started because while I am curious to see how both of these players are playing, I have mentioned before I'm not, I am not the biggest fan of this map. Exploit starting out with Light Vehicle Factory going for darts primarily into Scorchers, very scouting focused. While 400 is going light vehicles, and are they going for Scorchers or darts first? Or are they going to go pure slasher? Are they going to build nothing at all? Looks like the build nothing at all option is the option they're going for. They Oh, they're going for levelers early on. Okay, they're expecting a lot of Scorchers, and they'd be wrong. I mean, not necessarily super wrong, but levelers in this map? 400 is really going for a hard push, but I don't really see that working out. This map's hard to do that in. Okay, on defense, yeah, okay, it's kind of nice to have the splash damage of the leveler, that's true. But, as far as this map is concerned, there is no defense. Not until you've got about 50, 60 metal or so. Like, that's when you start doing defense. Like, this is not a map where you just go around with levelers and otherwise try to defend yourself. You are going to lose all the map control. Like, Exploit is starting out with a significant advantage just by having an easy time of establishing map control. And being able to raid off 100. Mostly being able to raid off 100. Who cares about map control? Map control is irrelevant when the map is this big. And it's 1v1 at this stage in the game. It'll be relevant later on. It'll be relevant by the time the players get to about the 30-40% of their side mark. Like, you know, once 400 captures all this and exploit captures all this, then map control will become more relevant. For now, though, raiding, that's the big thing. That's the huge thing. And I guess 400 really is using the levelers to try to dissuade raiding. But they're not going to be raiding Exploit, so Exploit can basically naked expand. And they have enough scouts going on to know more or less when, if, if and when, 400 would switch off of levelers and start building up something a bit more aggressive. So right now, if Exploit's on the ball, about it, although it looks like they're really focusing on their offense, then Exploit... Oh, no, there we go. There's the Mason. Good, good. But yeah, Exploit can just naked expand everywhere. They don't have to worry about anything at all. They're not getting raided. As soon as anything starts to come along, Exploit will know all about it. So I don't really see any point in worrying too much about anything other than the Naked Expand and get that Naked Expand up. Which is not happening. Exploit's being very paranoid. Although this is the front line. Oh, well, it's potentially a front line. It's kind of the first front line. I'm not going to fault them for the defender up front there. I am going to fault them a little bit if they put defenders back here, but it looks like they are not planning to. So yeah, they've actually got this pretty well set up. And they have the economic advantage from the start, so that's good. And a bit of raiding going on. There's the raiding. And, jeez, the defender's not even helping. That defender's in range, too. It's just... Exploit managed to get that dart well positioned, apparently. But yeah, so already some raiding going on. 400 is trying to cut through the center of the map, though. Not trying to expand along their side, whereas El Exploit's going for a bit more of a defensive expansion. And they're going more in the back, not focusing as much on the front, on the middle of the map, as they are on the back of the map. So 400 still, like I said, this is kind of what I mean by hard push. 400 is going to be trying to just cut through. I guess that's all they can really do with levelers. Try to just push through, have a very narrow area that they can't be raided on because the levelers or defenses will be right there. And then just cut straight into exploits base. Which, I mean, it looks like they're trying to do, and that's a super risky strategy, which I would not recommend. Because that's a one-shot thing. If it if it fails, you're done. You're totally done. There's no way out of it, or very little way out of it. And this is the other problem with levelers. You need to have a lot of them. Levelers are a weird kind of raider where you don't... Sorry, riot, not raider. The real weird kind of riot where if you're fighting a bunch of raiders, normally with a riot, say, a warrior, or even an outlaw, but warrior is kind of the canonical riot... With one warrior, you can easily deal with, say, five or six glaives. After that point, the glaives start to overwhelm the warrior, but one warrior can deal with a lot of glaives and definitely deal with them by cost. But one leveler can't by cost easily deal with more than two or three Scorchers, and even then it's kind of hard. I mean, technically two Scorchers at that point, it would be making cost because it's 260 total compared to 240, but that's not really worth it, obviously. However, once you get a lot of levelers, like five or six levelers, well, that much cost in Scorchers is going to be torn to shreds. It almost doesn't matter. By that point, you've pretty much gotten critical mass, whereas the levelers will one-shot groups. 
Because levelers are super high alpha, high damage, high AoE, but low rate of fire riot unit. And that rate of fire is the big difference maker. Whereas warriors are low damage, but very high rate of fire. And high spread. Not so much AoE, but they have a lot of spread. That's their big thing. So, when you're dealing with... When you're dealing with light vehicles, you gotta remember that levelers really work best in groups. Although, right now, exploit's been going one at a time with these Scorchers, so it hasn't really mattered. It's actually not made a huge difference. Granted, that leveler did just destroy its own metal extractor, and the Mason did not survive, so the leveler didn't do too much good. If that was two Scorchers, I think both would be dead. Two or three Scorchers, they'd both be dead. Four, they'd definitely both be dead. But at this point, 400's actually... They are taking the center pretty strongly. Whereas Exploit, not really focusing as much, and they get... They kind of got the west side, but not hugely. I mean, the one thing, Exploit right now, they're not really focusing on their raiding. They had a bunch of stuff set up for raiding while they were expanding. But this is when map control actually matters. I mentioned before, it doesn't really matter until about this much is captured. Or so, about this much is captured. Well, in this case, 400 is just going super aggressive, so it doesn't even matter how much is captured. So at this point, raiding would actually be super useful for both sides. Mostly for exploit right now, just to get 400 out of their face. I mean, at this point, 400 just has the one leveler. So if exploit were to send a few units, like send a few ravagers in to deal with that, well, that'd be it. Like that leveler, that's it. That leveler and the commander are all that is pushing 400 forward right now. Like exploit sends in a few ravagers to deal with that, exploit takes it. And then sends in a few Scorchers around the rest of the map, like, in the groups of four or five each. Probably would be able to rip through most any... Okay, it's a bit, a bit harder here, but yeah. Okay, Snuggle Base. I will appreciate that both players are accessing like mad. However, I realize that they're not... I don't like to talk about excess too much if we're not dealing with players who are, like, 1800, health, 1800 LO or higher. Because, well, I... I grant that both 400 and Exploit have way more metal than they have the energy to use it, and it's worth appreciating that fact. I don't really like to point that out too much when dealing with players below 1800 or so LO. Because I feel like at that point, it's... I don't know, I mean, it's worth pointing out, yes, don't excess, but they probably already know that it's just getting that internalized is a bit of an issue sometimes. Looking at your economy bar, that's kind of important thing to always know, but yeah. More importantly, though, I think it's the fact that there's way more metal than energy. That is a problem for both sides. A bit more so for 400, actually. At this point, really, energy is the only limiting factor. I'm a bit surprised that Exploit is building... Why is Exploit building energy pylons? There is literally no use for that. Like, Exploit would need another couple fusion plants for these energy pylons to be of any use. Because they are not pushing any energy for overdrive. There is no excess energy for overdrive. It does not exist. There's barely enough energy for... There's not enough energy for construction, let alone overdrive. And 400 is getting a fusion plant, so once that's done, there'll be at least a little bit more leeway for 400. I think 400 will start to actually take the advantage at that point. At this point, 400 is... They are taking the center. They're holding it pretty hard. It's actually worked out... The leveler-based strategy actually worked out pretty well, which I think is mainly because Exploit did not push. Like, Exploit was going for those Scorchers... And they didn't really hit hard with them. Like, one or two Scorchers, yeah, that's not going to work. Four or five Scorchers, that would have killed 400 before they had any chance to do anything. Because at that point, what would there have been? What, one or two levelers? That wouldn't have done anything. One leveler versus four Scorchers, the Scorchers win. I don't even think any of them die. They just win. And at this point, Exploit does have a decent army coming in, but now 400 has their fusion plant up. Now they really do need to get more caretakers. They have more caretakers. Getting a Strider Hub as well, they effectively have 80 build power, and they're getting effective overdrive too. Whereas Exploit has no overdrive, they are getting a bit more energy, but it's not great. The damage they're dealing is okay, but at this point, the economic damage is not going to be a real concern. Unless they go in the back and hit the energy. If they go in the back, hit the energy, hit the factory, all that stuff, that will probably kill 400. But, as it stands now, 400's got so much metal excess, they have so much metal they're not even using, that it doesn't even matter yet. And now it's just a matter of whether or not, like, if Exploit pushes with this, it'll work. 
But I don't know. It's actually no, I do know. It, it, okay, I don't know because I don't know if Exploit's going to keep going. If Exploit keeps going, they're fine. If they don't keep going, they're screwed. Like these Ravagers are on a suicide mission to win. Basically, that is what their job is, and it's going to become harder and harder to do that because the Strider Hub is up and Exploit is not attacking the factory. I realize that's not something you normally do. That's a situational thing. Normally, you do want to attack the economy. It's just. At this point, it doesn't really help all that much compared to just cutting the beast off, cutting the beast's heads off. Like I said, normally a bad idea. In this specific case, it's actually probably the only hope that Exploit has. Although at this point, with all the air units Exploit has, Exploit should get a Vulture. Like, on you're on CCR, you have an air factory, get a Vulture, see what's going on. Like. Exploit would probably realize, oh, hey, there's a fusion plant and not much else for energy. Exploit's relying, sorry, 400's relying entirely on this fusion plant for their energy income. If the Raptors went around the back and killed it, if Exploit knew, which, like I said, they can get a vulture. They can know. They really should get a vulture so that they can know these things. It's remarkably important. Like, if you ever notice, watching Google Frog play, one of the first things Google Frog always gets when they switch air is a vulture. Because scouting is that important. And it's just, it is such a powerful scout. And on a map like this, oh, and down goes Exploits Commander. Not even really that meaningful. Because Exploits Commander, I don't know, hit a few metal extractors. Didn't really do much. Applied a bit of pressure to the eastern side, but didn't help. Now, the Raptors are applying a bit more pressure, which is nice. But at this point, I feel like Exploits' lack of information is going to be a bit of a problem. And the fact that they're focusing now on the center, they're focusing in the center area that's got loads of anti-air. They aren't going to be able to do much damage here. Not with air. Ground maybe. But with air, it's not really the way to go. And this is where Wolverines would be super useful. I'm actually kind of impressed that they managed to do the damage they have without Wolverines. With all the defenses up and the slashers up and everything. But that's going to become considerably harder over time. And exploit continue with the pylon construction. I still don't agree with that. Mostly because... Okay, yeah, they're getting a bit of overdrive. But you need a lot of power to make that super useful along this many metal extractors. Whereas using the energy plant... Okay, yeah, this is a good idea. And now they are getting a fusion plant, so at least that'll be on the grid. So they'll have more energy. Exploit will actually be able to get some really good overdrive going very shortly. And they do have Wolverines. Okay, so they do have some Wolverines. They are getting that up. They're just on the eastern side of the map. Not dealing with the slashers yet, but they'll probably do so. And Exploit's got some good rating going on. These areas are also kind of cut off and pretty much dead. So, you know, Exploit's managed to get some good rating, and the only thing I was worried about, though, is this. 400 had a huge amount of time, well, okay, a minute, but that's fairly long in this game, with a much, well, much pronounced economic advantage. They had energy to spend their metal, basically. That was the thing that changed. And Exploit didn't. And this is, these are kind of the fruits of it. These Levelers and scorchers, I mean, Slashers, and the levelers, levelers and Slashers were more numerous. I mean, they're getting attritioned out, but still... 400... While they are taking a lot of damage, they do have the army to deal with this, and the Dante coming up... Ah, uh, man, will that turn it around? That's gonna be tough. Normally I'd say yes, but given the size of the map... It's actually kind of hard to say. I think 400... If they're going to win with a Dante, that'll just seal the deal. Let's just try to take a look at this. So right now, 400 pretty much has this stretch. These metal extractors here are pretty much dead, but they have this stretch. It's kind of theirs. Exploit sort of has this back area, but these are dead. So it's really this back area and a little bit here. So neither player can really be surrounded yet. Oh, Dante's up. Wait a sec. Oh, oops. That's the second Dante. My mistake. First Dante, however, yeah, that's... I think that's really going to be the thing, and that's what I mean by... 400 had the advantage, economically, and Exploit, while they were able to deal some economic damage and get down to parity, not really get an advantage, the Dante was already up. Like, that economic advantage was already there, and the production advantage was just being capitalized on. Their production capacity was being capitalized on. So it really wasn't something that economics was a factor in. Like, Exploit was too, li was too late in getting rid of 400's economy. They would have been far better off had they attacked, had they scouted out with the Vulture that they could have gotten because they have an air factory, 
seeing that, oh hey, there's not a lot of energy, there's a decent amount of metal, no energy, and a lot of concentrated construction power, but not a lot of army. And the Raptors could have gone right instead of left and torn that apart, possibly killed the Dante too first before it came in and wrecked Exploit's base, pretty much winning the game right here. Like, Exploit's gonna lose the fusion plant, gonna lose most of their grid now, killing what overdrive they had. This Dante is still in really good shape, and the other Dante is up. It's on the way. So this Dante here, yeah, it's taking some damage. It's, you know, it's reloading its thing. It's got, it's got the potential to be captured, but probably not. However, it's, it's destroyed everything Exploit has. Exploit's got another factory on the build, but it doesn't really matter. It's done. This game's over. I mean, I don't know what Exploit could possibly do at this point that would be able to turn this around. And at this point, it looks like they are going to be planning to go for rogues. Yeah, but that's way too late, though. The Dante, that'll finish off the rest of the base. All the rest of these metal extractors, straggling factories and everything, that'll be picked off by the group here. 400 doesn't have radar coverage of the eastern, of the western side, I should say, though, so at least that's one thing. They don't know the Shieldbot factory's there, but they'll probably suspect, and it looks like, yeah, they're going to double-check this area. This is going to be gone. Man, Exploit had a really good chance, too. It just came down to lack of scouting. Like, they didn't have the scouting. They both didn't have energy, so it's kind of both their fault. But yeah, they didn't have scouting. They didn't have... real. They didn't understand that... They didn't know, and nothing was going on here. Not a matter of understanding. They didn't know what was going on here. So, there was really no way... Yeah, they had no idea about the caretakers. There was no way that Exploit knew to go here, but there was a way they could have. Which is... The thing, vultures. Vultures are key. Super useful unit. Always get that if you're going air. So yeah, that's that was that. It's kind of an interesting game, though. But yeah, I feel like, I don't know, for the most part, 400 really was committing to what they were doing. They had their early levelers. They used it for defense. They were expanding a little bit more slowly, but they weren't getting raided. I guess they figured this map's too big for my opponent to bother trying to contest me and map control my own base. And the thing is, Exploit was actually building up to do exactly that, but they didn't commit to it, nor did they really commit to a full-on naked expansion to just get the economic advantage and explode. So they kind of let 400 get away with map control, get away with carving down the center, and get away with having their army. Despite the fact that Exploit could have dealt with any of those things in advance, I just feel like Exploit didn't commit. They were getting too timid. I haven't seen Exploit in a while, but I feel like that's a common issue Exploit has, is they tend to feel a bit too timid about what's in the dark. Which is a common thing for RTS games. It's one of the hardest things about playing RTS games, actually, is that you're in the dark about a lot of what's going on, and knowing what's there is often a luxury you can't afford. So you have to either guess, or you have to make you know, educated guesses, essentially, reads, based off of what you know of your opponent, or what you know of what you've seen so far, what you know of the game in general. And that's where things like Vultures are super useful, because that's your luxury, that's your scouting, that's your perfect information. Right there. So, a bit of a shame that Exploit didn't take advantage of that. Because that does seem to be a weakness. At least in this game. It was In this game, they clearly had that weakness, and it's... It's a common problem, it's a common difficulty. Anyway, the next game is going to be between some newer, oops, some newer players who are going to, yeah, stupid. sorry, it's going to be between some newer players who are one cut and well, actually, one cut's not new, but Juan Dex is fairly new, from the looks of it. Oh no, they're, no, they're not. Year and a half. I haven't seen them around though. Okay. Well, anyway, so it'll be one cut versus Juan Dex on Ravaged. That'll be up in just a couple minutes, so stay tuned.